there's a werewolf in our neighborhood. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I've recently stopped seeing this creepy dogman in my backyard because I installed some fairly expensive trap cameras around my property. He's too smart to go near the cameras, which indicates that he is not an ordinary animal. I know he's still in the area, though, because a friend of mine told me she saw him last night, about two blocks from my house. I feel pretty confident that he won't be peeking in my windows again, unless there's a blackout that turns the cameras off. But each time I go for a walk outside my own property, I make it a point to get back long before sundown. I still don't feel safe outside of the range of those cameras, as I still get the vibe that this dogman has it in for me. Let me start at the beginning, and maybe you'll see how I got myself all worked up about this. I've lived in this home nearly all my life. My mother was actually born in this house in the 1940s, and she left it to me when she passed on. I was born in a hospital in the 1960s, but this is the house I grew up in and that I expect to live in for the rest of my life. I was married to a banker once, fairly briefly, and we lived in Chicago. For better or worse, that ended in divorce. And after mom passed, I moved out here to live out the rest of my days. I'm happy now with my birds and my fish, for the most part. I do admit that I did start to regret being so solitary, and to even sort of start to wish I had a man here, or at least a big pet dog, on the nights when the creatures started to come around. The first time I saw him, the dog man, was in reflection. I was up in the middle of the night in the bathroom, and the Mexican food I had that night was coming back for an encore. I was brushing my teeth to get that taste out of my mouth when I glanced up into the bathroom mirror and I saw this deformed looking dog face looking in my window at me. The deformations were mainly from a defect in my mirror but that warped funhouse effect added to the shock of the moment. I turned quickly and for one split second as toothpaste flew around the room, my eyes locked onto the gaze of the biggest canine head I had ever seen. It broke the gaze and ran away, and I could hear it scramble down my driveway, knocking over a metal garbage can as it ran toward the woods in the back, making a loud crashing noise and waking the neighbor's dog. The houses out here are not right on top of each other, but we're close enough to hear loud noises coming from each other a lot of the time. As an example, one day I was trying to fix a wooden chair out back. I hit my thumb with a hammer, then I screamed. And the next thing you knew, the wife of the neighbor couple ran over to my backyard gate to see if I was alright. They're nice people, but their dog is loud. So there was no way I was going to go outside to deal with the garbage being knocked over until the sun was up. And when I did, my neighbor, the husband this time, was out there with me, asking me if I saw what knocked my trash down. I lied and said no. Then I looked him square in the eye when I asked him, what did you see? He looked very surprised at my question, and with a guilty expression, he claimed he hadn't seen anything, and then he swore, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. That made me laugh. I never accused him of knocking my garbage can over, and I just looked at him like he had three heads. I spent the rest of that day wondering if my neighbor might be a werewolf. I mean, I never would have considered that, but he acted so guilty when I asked him directly. Things quieted down for maybe three or four days, and then I had this very bad nightmare that I was being stalked and followed everywhere I went by that tall bipedal dog that had knocked over my trash. In that dream, even when it was daytime, I could see him in a crowd, staring at me everywhere I went, and each time I spotted him, he would leave and find a new hiding spot so I'd have to search for him all over again. 
When I woke up, I was initially very relieved to see that I was in my bed. Then I glanced out my bedroom window, and right there was a canine head with reddish-orange eyes glaring in at me like he hated me, like he wanted to hurt me. When I sat up in surprise, the dogman started to growl at me and bark angrily. This, in turn, set off the neighbor's dog, which clearly unnerved the dogman. He ran off once the barking started next door. I don't think he could have feared their little 40-pound terrier, so he must have feared being discovered. I always got the weird sense that he wanted me isolated. Besides scaring and upsetting me and Fido next door, the creature appeared to have some kind of mind game agenda going on at the same time. He wanted me to see him, but I'm not so sure he wanted anyone else to. He wanted me dealing with this harassment directly and personally. Somehow, for some reason, he had singled me out for this targeted treatment. Was he someone from my past in werewolf form? Was he some supernatural being working on behalf of an enemy of mine? Or was he some kind of an intelligent animal that chose me for some other seemingly random reason that wouldn't even make sense to a human like me? I don't really know what the deal was with him, but I do have to say that I have no doubt that for whatever reason, he had singled me out personally for this targeted harassment. I am sending this story to you because I actually accidentally found the solution to my problem in one of your old videos. Each day I search the internet looking for ways to get a dogman or werewolf or wolfman to leave you alone. Most of the ideas I read made no sense to me, as they involved spells and invocations. I'm not sure I believe in any of that stuff. I just wanted to get rid of this pest like I had gotten rid of roaches after my divorce when I moved to an apartment on what I could afford during that period. I just went ape on them. I used every single kind of thing I could use, although the one that worked was boric acid whether you believe me or not. Nobody thinks that's going to work because it's so much cheaper than all the other things you can do. So, I was reading everything I could about the dogman, trying to figure out what his Achilles heel was. What was the boric acid for the dogman? And I found it on your channel, which turned out to be setting up 24-7 security cameras around my home. Now, I won't say that's a cheap solution, but I will say it does my heart good to be able to log into my app on my computer or my phone and see everything that's happening around my house at that moment. I can check it from my bed at 3 in the morning. I can check it from a restaurant in town if I'm out. I absolutely love it, and it even alerted me to a human looking in one of my windows one night. I was able to shout at the guy and scare him off. I think he was just a drifter, but now I don't have to care who he was thanks to the cameras. If you have a dogman problem or a crime problem, I would want to pass this on, that this works very well for me. And if it doesn't keep the dogman away from your home, then you should at least get a nice clear photo or video of the creature, which would make you world famous and rich, so then you could afford to move away from the dogman. Seems like a win-win scenario to me. But anyway, things got worse before I got the cameras and set them up. The creature got bold. He got threatening. What do I mean? Well, let me tell you. The stress of being awakened by that beast at night had started to really make me rattled. I found myself trying to take naps during the day and catch up with my work at night. But then I swear to you the dogman started appearing when the sun was up. It would be like an hour or two before or after sunrise or sunset. It wasn't like he would be there at noon, but his obsession with me seemed to be advancing, not retreating. I started to wish I had someone to talk to about it, but I was only brave enough to communicate online using a fake name with some people I didn't know. Even then, I tried to say as little as I possibly could. Part of that's because I don't want people I do business with to think I've gone batty. And another part of it is because I'm paranoid that this is actually a werewolf or a creature that's somehow controlled by human intelligence. 
When the creature is in my nightmares, it's always someone I know. Or else sort of remotely controlled by someone I know. I'm aware this may just be my lack of sleep causing me to become paranoid. But on the other hand, I don't want to disinclude any possible explanations for what's happening. I don't think I believe in werewolves. I think it's probably a dogman. But I don't know enough to say anything definitive. I mean... I don't guess anyone in the whole world can speak definitively about dogmen or werewolves, at least not until there is some scientific proof, including but not limited to DNA evidence. The day I ordered my cameras online, I felt such a wonderful sense of peace fall over the entirety of me. I was certain that this would solve my problem. And it was the first time I had felt like my side had a win in a very long time. I went for a walk in the woods behind my property around 4.30 or 5 in the evening, which had always felt like a safe time before. Not so on that night. That dog man seemed to know what I had done. He seemed to understand that his reign of terror over me was about to end. And he was waiting for me in those woods. He waited until I was fairly close, before springing out at me. If I hadn't been so paranoid, I don't think I would have noticed the leaves moving ahead of me to the right. And I don't think I would have turned and run in time. He would have succeeded in springing his trap, and I would have been torn to ribbons by his claws. As it was, the beast nearly caught me a number of times. My jacket was sliced multiple times, as was my loose-fitting shirt underneath. I did not experience pain during those swipes of the creature's claws, and I couldn't tell if I had been cut by the beast. In the moment, it wasn't something I was going to be able to concern myself with. I just had to keep going. I had to find smaller, tighter areas to cut through where the beast man was too large to follow. Mostly, though, I had to get extremely lucky. I tried to stay focused on survival, but my mind was divided, wondering if I had already been scratched, and wondering if that meant I was going to become a werewolf myself. I know that I never established whether this was a dogman or a werewolf or what it was, but I have to admit that I was nearly as afraid of becoming a werewolf as I was of being ripped up and eaten by a dogman. So it wasn't only that I was afraid of him hurting or finishing me. I was afraid of any physical contact because that could end up with me suffering a sort of living death and possibly an eternity in hell if what some people say about werewolves online turned out to be correct. I was so stressed out my eyes were crying on their own with no control over it by me. So I had to keep wiping tears from my eyes as I ran too. There is a row of rose bushes in the back of my house that had gotten particularly overgrown that year due to my frazzled state of mind. On a weird hunch, I ran from the woods toward that. There was a break in the row which I felt I could drop to all fours and crawl through. If the dogman chose to follow, he'd have to get himself all thorned up, you know. So that's what I did. I dropped down to the ground and I was about to crawl through this area down low where the rose bushes had randomly chosen not to grow. Just before going through, I looked behind me, and I saw the face of that dog man or werewolf or whatever it truly is, looking down at me, grinning a toothy grin, just observing me as though I were meat and nothing more. Then it let out this kind of a bellow that didn't sound like anything that a dog sounds like at all. It was part scream, and part moan, and part victory cry, and part threat. It felt like there was a lot of information being put out into the woods when that monster dogman was making all that horrible noise. I don't know how much of it my mind could interpret, but when my knees went wobbly, and it felt hard to even crawl, I could tell that the intended message was getting through directly to my nervous system and bypassing my brain altogether. 
When I saw that creature making that terrible racket, its eyes did this thing, I don't know what you'd even call it, but it was the opposite of pupil dilation. Like, instead of his eyes going all black, his pupils shrank, and I could see the whites of this guy's eyes. Like, you can usually only barely see the whites of most dog's eyes, but this one shrunk his pupils down to pinpoints, and he looked even more angry than I think I've ever seen anyone look. He even made my ex-husband look civilized in comparison. I'm joking to relieve my own tension, but I really can hardly even believe that I survived that moment. The dogman was right there, and my body basically gave out on me. By all rights, he should have done me in right then and there, but somehow I got my body crawling, and I got to the other side of that rose bush, and I was finally in my own yard. Then it was just a matter of staggering, falling, crawling, and whatever else worked to get myself from there back into the house. When I locked the back door from the inside, I have to say I fell into a crying heap for a while. I needed some time for self-pity before my legs could really start to work again. By the time I was able to examine the reflection of my back in two mirrors, I found no scars at all. My jacket and top were both ruined, so I expected to at least find a small scratch on my back. Instead, there was nothing. So I wondered the same thing that some of you might be wondering. Had the wound already healed? Because if it had, that might indicate werewolfism. If that creature was a werewolf, and it scratched me, then I might have become one as well. And if I were a werewolf, then I would have a healing ability far beyond that of an ordinary human. In other words, if I were a werewolf, then I wouldn't have found any wound on my back, because that wound would have already healed. I would have found what I did find, which was nothing. I had, a t I had a terrible time of it for the next couple of weeks, waiting for the full wound to come around. Even after it came and went, I kept studying my body for any signs of change. I started taking pictures of my face at 5 p.m. each day to see if I was starting to get 5 o'clock shadow like men get. After two months and no sign of hair growth or anything werewolf-like at all, I'm pretty certain that the creature just didn't scratch me. It sure wasn't for lack of trying, though. I'll give it that much. The cameras arrived soon after that, and I've not seen the beast once since then. Like I've already indicated, someone I know saw it not too long ago, and I don't think it's left the area. I know the creature does still present a threat to me, but it's also very satisfying to be able to reclaim my home as my own turf. My nightmares have gone away. Which makes me wonder if the werewolf was causing those deliberately. Or maybe it was his presence. His bad energy outside my house at night, which brought them on. Whatever it was, they're gone now. And I couldn't be more grateful to both the manufacturers of these lovely cameras. And to the various viewers of yours who have passed on this secret for dogman proofing your home. I tell you, if I started a home security company tomorrow, I think I'd use the image of a dogman as my symbol. That's because my home security cameras are the only thing I know of, which will keep these cryptids at bay. And I should know. Because. There's a werewolf in our neighborhood. I'm not trying to spook or scare you, but our executive producer is named Megara. Please join me in thanking our executive producer of this episode, Megara, a.k.a. Fraggy Dendron. Fraggy Megara donates to us in so many different ways, I can't even describe them. But you know who can? Is our international TV spokesmongrel, Henry Lee Dogman. Hank. Thanks, Biggie. And thanks to all of you for watching this far. If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe. And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos, or 
through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. To receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button. Or join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804 LaScary. You may need to call back on that when it cuts off after, I think, three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Come back, come back for more scary, scary stories. stories.